yet. Okay, you don't know what you got till it's gone. Have you ever heard that? So there's this phrase that says, you don't know what you got till it's gone. And basically what it says, what it means is, um, you don't know what you got till it's gone. That's what it means. 9 a.m. laughed at that joke. Okay, y'all. I want to propose to you this idea that you don't have to lose what you have to appreciate what you got. But oftentimes we do. We, we, we do take for granted what we have. And it's not until it's taken away that we, we show or feel our appreciation or gratefulness for it. You know, there is a reason that missionaries, when they go to a third world country, uh, come back despising Americans because they have been exposed to poverty. And it's in realizing what they don't have that they appreciate what they did have. And then they come back home and see people that do have what other people don't have take for granted what they do have and not appreciate what they would love to have. And it's just like, y'all are just spoiled. Y'all are spoiled. We have another word for that. The Christian word I would love to use is what we're going to talk about today as we wrap up our I Am series, I Am Blessed. Everyone say, I'm blessed. I'm going to add a, I'm going to add a word in there. Everyone say, I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. I want to, I want to talk about what that means today because we say it, I'm blessed. And we think about a couple things. Yeah, I got a family and I got a house and you know, I'm saved. And that's like surface level. I, I want to go deep today and really talk about what it means, how blessed we really are. And it's my hope in you understanding and realizing how blessed you really are that you naturally, as a result, live a humble, grateful, thankful, God-honoring, God-praising, uh, God-pursuing life. Okay? That's our plan for today. If you're with us, everyone look at Mel grab Kleenex. She's getting ready already. She's like, oh, he's going to talk about how blessed I am. Let me get the Kleenex. Let me get the Kleenex. If you are with us, let everyone hear you say, I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. I am blessed. Um, let's start out with this one right here. Uh, our series came out of Ephesians. Ephesians uh, chapter 1 verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. I, I can't even get my mind wrapped around that. Uh, when, when we talk about all these spiritual blessings as we look through Ephesians chapter 1, uh, we see these words, um, chose us, a holy, blameless, predest predestined, adoption, glorious grace. We see words like redemption, forgiveness, riches of grace, lavished upon us, wisdom, counsel, set forth in Christ. We see words like obtained an inheritance and predestined to his purpose. We see praise of his glory, your salvation, your sealed promised Holy Spirit. Again, an inheritance. So Paul um, has identified um, with this nine spiritual blessings. Uh, we want to break it down into three categories. So first and foremost, everyone say, I'm blessed spiritually. You are blessed spiritually. And when we break down in these three categories where we see these nine, uh, the first is past selection. Past selection. Before you were even born, before God created anything, you were blessed. Isn't that crazy to think about? This goes back to our very first sermon in this series when we talk about I am chosen. You are chosen by God before creation in love for a purpose because he said so. Ephesians 1, 4, 5 continues, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. That is a blessing 
to be chosen, to be known by God is a blessing. And that blessing, that spiritual blessing occurred in the past. How crazy is that to think? Before anything existed, you were blessed. See, I'm talking about the depths of this. It's more than just, I have a car in a house, in a job, in a family, and I know God. No, before you were even, before you even existed, before you even breathed one breath, you were blessed. You were blessed in the past. You were blessed in the present. This is a spiritual blessing. Your present adoption. Your present adoption. We see this even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Your past blessed that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself. You have been adopted, redeemed, saved, called in. You are a member of God's family. In the present, in, in the now, you are presently spiritually blessed. And this is our sermons about I am treasured. This is, a, this is a present blessing. We talked about it's not just that God so loves you, you are treasured. And we talked about what it means to be treasured, what a person does for that treasure, with that treasure. That treasure is set apart it's thought about, it's sought after, it's guarded against, rejoiced over to die for. These are all things that are presently have happened in your life upon your salvation. And then the following week, we talked about what it means to be declared righteous or justified. You came in and you exchanged your sin card for God's righteous card. That's a present thing. Because that presently happened, there is an abundance of spiritual blessings that are poured out upon the person that that happens to. There is love and grace and forgiveness and righteousness and hope and peace and assurance and life. Everything that your eternal soul longs for, you, you, you receive at the moment of that repentance and calling out to Jesus. And your sin is laid down and you receive his righteousness. Righteous card. You're justified by grace through faith in Christ according to Scripture for God's glory. And then the following week you were sealed. This is a blessing. This is a, a spiritual blessing that Paul identifies. Being sealed. Hey, you know that whole adoption, justified, you're known by God, and you have peace and love, and he's going to guide you. Yeah, all that stuff is sealed. You've been sealed by God with God, for God. That is a spiritual blessing that is, has, is happening right now. It, it, it's happening because of your present adoption. Again, we look through and we see these words, redemption, forgiveness, grace, making known to us. That's counsel, that's wisdom, that's all present. And so when we talk about spiritual, spiritually being blessed, this refers to the past, this refers to the present, and this also refers to the future. The future unification, being one day fully, completely, wholly united with God. United in, in, in the glorification state. It, this is the completion, the perfection, the full realization of salvation. We have a taste of God. We have that down payment. Remember we talked about being sealed? You were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, which is the down payment of your inheritance. You have a down payment of God. Future unification is the full realization when you are wholly united in the presence of God of heaven. That's a future blessing. And so you're blessed in the past. This is, this is heavy, right? You're blessed in the past. You're blessed now currently in the present by adoption, and you will be blessed in the future again. In him, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee, the down payment of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it. So this is a future thing. So you are blessed spiritually, past, present, future. Crazy. Crazy to think the depths of this. Everyone say, I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed spiritually. You are so blessed physically. This has to do with, with, with our real life, this physical world. 
Everything you have comes from God. Your, 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 your money, your house, your food, your clothes, your cars. Sure, you bought with the money that what? That, that, that you have obtained by ways of the gifts, the talents, the intellect that God has given you. Everything traces back to God. Everything has God's fingerprints on it. Everything that you have physically is from God. We see David praying, and he says, Who am I, and who are my people that we could give anything to you? Everything we have comes from you, and we give you only what you first gave us. Think about it like this, parents. Everything your kids have, yeah, it's theirs. It's, it's, it's their, their clothes, their, 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 their toys, their bed, their dresser, their closet, their room. But who, who got it for them? Who, who, who gave it to them? Well, you, the parents. Same thing with us with God. We're the children in the clothes, the, the rooms, the toys we have. Yeah, it's ours, but where'd it come from? Everything comes from God. You are blessed spiritually. You are blessed physically. Now, again, I mentioned there's reasons that missionaries who go to third world countries come back and literally despise Americans because they see how how blessed of a life we live and how much we take for granted. You know, there's a true story. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was joking with one of the office workers in the front office, and this message was in preparation. Remember, last week, God had something different to say, so last week, this was on the forefront of my mind. And the office worker made mention of like, oh, is this room being occupied right now? Because if it is, then I have to walk down two doors to get coffee. And I had said, hey, that's so sad. How about we call someone from a third world country and you tell them how rough it is that you have to walk down two doors to get coffee when they have to walk two miles to get dirty water. And it was kind of like, you know, I was joking, but kind of taking a little, hey, let's get our minds right. But I wasn't comparing your life to theirs to say, you should feel terrible. I'm comparing your life to theirs to say, you are so blessed. And this is what I want to do with you right now. I'm just going to read off some things. I just wrote down some things that we have been blessed with physically in our life, and I'm going to read them off. And if you remove any three of these things, your life will change. Any three of these things that I read off, you take away from you and your life will drastically change. And these are just everyday things that we take for granted. Now, this isn't meant to make you feel bad. This is meant to make you feel blessed. This isn't meant to make you sit there and be like, dang. This is meant to make you feel like, Dang, I am so blessed. I am so blessed physically. So, here, I'm just going to read some things off. And when you've had enough, when you're like, I get it, just go ahead and stand up. Start clapping, start praising God. Just let me know, okay? I'm going to read some things. Life. <laughs> go ahead, Isaiah, right? That's it. Life. What, what more? That's, that's a but, but we take it for granted every day. We take it for, for granted every day. Some people didn't wake up today. Air. Arms, legs, hands, feet, fingers, toes. Again, let's just, just pause for a second. Some people don't have these things. And we, if we were to remove any one of these things from your life, you, your life would drastically change. But we take these things for granted every single day. The sense of hearing, taste, touch, smell, sight. The ability to sit, stand, walk, run, climb, move. Now, I'm going to move fast because there's a lot. But think about these. These are everyday things that we take for granted. And I'm trying to get you to see how blessed you really are. The ability to think, read, speak, comprehend, interact, make a living with the gifts, talents, knowledge, and ability to work the jobs which provide 
the money, the benefits, the insurance, the retirement funds, the saving funds, the investment funds, the daily funds, which buy food to cook on, you ready? Remove any one of these things. If we remove three things already, your life has drastically changed. But here's some of these things, ready? <clears throat> you get the funds to buy the food to cook on the stoves, grills, smokers, microwaves, crock pots, air fryers, ovens, with pots, pans, bowls, plates, forks, spoons, knives, cutting boards, blenders, toasters, coffee pots, tea kettles, glasses, cups, bottles, paper towels, napkins. H have you had enough yet of how blessed you really are? Again, these things we take for granted. You are so blessed physically with clean water, juices, soft drinks, energy drinks, milk, teas, coffees, creamers, cars, vans, trucks, bikes, motorcycles, trikes, planes, boats, vacations, vacation homes. Some of us have vacation homes, actual homes with one car, two car, three car, four car garages. The homes we have have roofs, windows, insulation, doors, locks, cameras, dogs, cats, fish, yards, pools, jacuzzis, toys, land, lawn mowers, snow blowers, leaf blowers, plows, shovels, brooms, rakes, paint, paint brushes, paint rollers, sprayers, hand tools, power tools, screws, screws, nails, glue, staples, scissors, clips, tapes, bins, boxes. We are so blessed physically. Again, remove some of the things from our lives and see how drastically our lives change. Central air. Heat. Let's go without that. Fans. Refrigerators. Electricity. You ever have your, let your power go off? That's a blessing. That's a physical blessing that we take for granted every single day. Gas, pipes, sinks, dishwashers, dish soaps, sponges, walls, screens, patios, flooring, carpet, vacuums, mops, buckets, cleaning products, couches. Some people don't have couches. Chairs, tables, strollers, beds, cribs, pillows, blankets, sheets, dressers, cabinets. You're going to like this one. Multiple closets with dress pants, regular pants, pajamas pants, shorts, swimwear, activewear, dresses, gowns, flip-flops, dress shoes, gym shoes, work shoes, short sleeve, long sleeve, no sleeve, shirts, light sweaters, medium sweaters, heavy sweaters, hoodies, summer hats, winter hats, purses, wallets, jewelry, accessories, sunglasses, prescription glasses, reading glasses, contacts, gloves, Mittens, scarves, socks, boots, fall jackets, winter jackets, spring jackets. All things we take for granted every single day. Physical blessings that we have. Dare I say Starbucks pumpkin spice lattes. Because it's fall, officially. Underwear. Long underwear. Lingerie. Diapers for babies, as well as adults. Remove any of these three things, your life drastically changes. Toilets, baths, showers, soap. You know, some people don't have soap. Shampoo, conditioner, toothbrushes, toothpaste, combs, curling irons, women, hair dryers, straighteners, razors, cream, sprays, gels, lotions, powders, makeup, toilet paper. Remember COVID? Towels, rags, wipes, cloths, loofahs, rugs, mirrors, curtains. Friends, moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas, brothers, sisters, nieces, nephews, aunts, uncles, sons, daughters, cousins. Schools. Books. Teachers, desks, pencils, pencils, pens. I said pencils twice. Markers, papers. Multiple TVs. Multiple computers. Personal laptops, tablets, gaming systems with an abundance of games, printers, radios, house phones, work phones, cell phones, text, email, snap, post, like, comment, connect, internet, Wi-Fi, security, 
churches, the Bible, Bible teachers, restaurants to eat at or order from, pickup or delivery, Uber, department stores, convenience stores, shoe stores, clothing stores, home goods stores, smoke stores, liquor stores, drug stores, medicine, hospitals, doctors, dentists, technology, banks, courts, judges, laws, police, fire, paramedics. Count your blessings, not your problems. Count your blessings, not your problems. You know, the craziest thing is I'm sure there is so much more that I left off this list that if we had a scale of your life and we were to say, hey, all these things, let's put them in the scale. What do you have to complain about? What does your your complaints, your your, your uncontentment, does it does it outweigh? Does it balance? No. And yet some of us live as though it does. Again, not taking shots, putting things into perspective. You are so blessed. We're beyond blessed. We are ridiculously blessed. You are blessed physically. Everything you have, everything on this list has come by the hands of God. And if you were to take any one of these things away, any three of these things away, you would experience it. You would know it. I'm going to say something you might not like, but I have to say it. I'm going to say it to myself first. You know those kids you complain about someone would love to have? You know that house that you complained about someone would love to have? You know that car that you complained about someone would love to have? You know your looks that you don't like? Someone would love to have. Your clothes that are outdated? Someone would love to have. Count your blessings. Count your blessings, not your problems. Count your blessings, not someone else's. This is what like, we, we like to do that, right? We like to compare. That's why the next thing, the next way you're blessed is you're blessed personally. God is personal. He, he knows your name. He calls you by name. He knows your thoughts, your words before you speak them. He knows your coming, your going, your rising, your sitting before the formation of the world. He chose you. He knew you. When you were intricately woven in your mother's womb. You, you are blessed spiritually. You are blessed physically. You are blessed personally. Personally by God. We sang the song. In, in, in Numbers, God tells Aaron to bless the people of Israel. And he says, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Six times he says you, and each time it's in the singular. It's in the singular form when he says you. Two million people that he's blessing, that God is blessing through Aaron. Two million people, and he doesn't bless them corporately. He blesses them personally. Personally, your kids is God's gift to you personally. Your car, your clothes, your jewelry, your looks, your job, your whatever, God has given you personally. It's a personal gift, a personal blessing from God to you. With that being the truth, how are we going to treat that blessing? How, how are we going to respond to knowing that the God of the universe has personally blessed me. Well, I'm going to love these kids to the best of my ability, man. I'm going to be so mindful of, of my irritability and my discipline. This is a gift God has given me, not you. You don't have my kids. I don't have your kids. You don't have my job. You don't live in my house. I don't have your car. These are personal blessings from God to you. How are we going to treat those things? How are we going to respond to those things? For me, oh my gosh, I want to just be so grateful and thankful and live a life that displays his love, grace, and goodness. We're so blessed. We're so blessed. It's not just, I have a house 
And, you know, I woke up this morning. It's like, no, man, you are spiritually blessed. Past, present, future. You are physically blessed. You have so much to be thankful for. You are personally blessed. God knows you by name. God knows you by name. Everything that you have has come personally from God. It's amazing when we think about it. And this is going to be for all eternity. You're blessed eternally. You're blessed eternally. These, these, these blessings that, that, that you have, again, it's, it's, it's for eternity. You're, you're blessed with eternity. You know, everyone's going to live forever. It's just a matter of where you go. And so for the born-again, spirit-filled follower of Christ, you are blessed with an eternal life with him. You are blessed with eternity. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift, the blessing of God, is eternal life through Christ our Lord. Now this eternal life, this, this is not a quantity of life, although there is that element, it's eternal. This is quality of life. Eternal life him, is Jesus himself. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is a relationship with Christ that lasts for eternity. So it's not just... I'm blessed, I got a house, I got a car, I got this, I got that. It's like, no, man, this is, this is eternal. You're blessed with eternity. You're blessed with eternity. You're blessed for eternity. Ten million years from now, you're blessed. Before the world was ever created, you're blessed. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. Before God ever said, let there be light, you were blessed. When everything's gone and done, 10 million years from now, you're blessed. You're so blessed. And again, it's our hope in knowing what we have and knowing who we are and knowing that we're blessed, that we respond the way God wants us to respond. To respond. Our word for the year is taste and see that the Lord is good. God is more than just his being in the sky. He wants you to know him in an intimate, personal, active, daily love relationship. And it's in knowing these truths that we would hopefully respond in pursuit of God. God, I want to know you. I want to experience more of you. Listen, we, this whole eternity thing, I'm going to try to... Ten years ago, I saw this rope illustration from Francis Chan. Um, if you've seen this illustration before, pretend you haven't. If you've never seen this illustration before... Forget I said that you saw, I saw it from Francis Chan. And think that I made this up on my own. And then tell everyone how awesome this church is. And they need to be a part of it because they have great illustrations. No, don't lie. This is from Francis Chan. This is a rope. Now pretend this rope goes on forever. Okay? This is all of eternity. This is forever. So it just, it, it goes on. It's endless, okay? Now, this rope is not just eternal. This is going to represent the timeline of your life, okay? This is your life. This whole rope is your timeline. This is your existence. Eternal, okay? Forever. This is your life on earth, Okay, this little bitty section here is your life on earth. When you leave here or when you came in, you're going to get these little ropes and they're going to serve as a reminder of this truth. This is your life on earth. With this being an absolute truth, the sad reality, a major frustration, so many of us focus so much on this. Everything is right here. Everything is here. My life, my, 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 my finances, my, my decisions, this person angered me in and, and gossip and drama and what am I going to, when am I going to, who am I going to, and it's all right here and everything is right here. 
and I'm just going to work, 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 and save and save, and then I get to this point right here, and then maybe I can travel, maybe I can enjoy some stuff, and, and, and we're just like, we're, we're not focusing or even realizing that this ain't it. All right, this is it. And another sad reality is, is decisions and things that we do here affect this. So many people living for this. Money, sex, drugs, popularity, give me, give me, give me, and I want to obtain the whole world. And, and in gaining the whole world, you lose your eternal soul. Decisions and things you make here impact this. This is your life. Where's your focus? Where's your focus? You get so caught up in everything here. And you lose sight or you don't even know. You forget. Ten million years from now, you won't even know this. And I get it. Life here is important. I get it. But it, this ain't it. This ain't it. You're so blessed. You're so blessed. You're so blessed. Spiritually, physically, personally, eternally. Live these eternal lives. Right? Because all of this stuff, this is now as well. You, you have this now. You have this now. Unless you don't. Unless you don't have this now. Again, decisions that you make here affect this. And I can't have anyone in here not at least have an opportunity to make a decision that could drastically forever change this. And so what I need you to know is that God is real. And when he created you, he created you to be in a personal, intimate love relationship with him. That's why you were created. To know God personally and so what god did is he gave us rules and standards commands just like any good parent would give a child to keep them safe to keep them living to keep them in that right standing relationship and just like any child we have all neglected disobeyed gone our own way and what that has done is that has separated us from God. And so the relationship that we were created to have, we can now not have. And if you're here and you don't have a relationship with God, you know it. You know it. Because what people do because of that separation is they feel it. There's no joy. There's no peace. There's no hope. There's no purpose. There's no life. There's, there's, there's this big open wound, this void in my life. And I'm trying to fill it. With drugs and sex and popularity and relationships and more money, better job, bigger house, nicer car, newer this, better that, more this. And nothing works because nothing works. And, and if you're here and you're saying, you know it. You know it. And if it worked, then why ain't it working? If it worked, then why don't it work? Because it don't work. And I'm not just telling you this because I have to say it. I'm telling you this because I was that guy. I was that guy that had everything and it was like, nothing works, nothing works, nothing works. So we're separated and we know it. And the other thing we try to do is we try to like work our way back to God. Okay, I know there's this separation, so I'm just going to try to do a bunch of good stuff. I'm going to go to mass, I'm going to go to confession, I'm going to do some sacraments, light some candles, give some money, build some homeless shelters, feed, feed the poor. I'm going to do all this good stuff. My good's going to outweigh my bad. And then on that day, I'm going to stand before God and be like, hey, I'm good. And God's going to say, no. No, there, there is this, this sin, this, this broken law that needs to be dealt with. And since you didn't decide to deal with it here, now it's got to be dealt with here. And this is an eternal separation. Because that's the rightful punishment. And God knows this. And God doesn't want this for anyone. He understands the consequences of this. And so what he did 
is he came down from heaven to earth in the person of Jesus Christ. And Jesus lived the perfect life. All of this life right here that you have to live to be made right with God, Jesus lived it. He never once sinned. And being perfect, he offered himself as a sacrifice, taking your guilt, your shame, your punishment, your consequence, your eternal separation upon himself. He died, he was buried, he raised on the third day. Because he did that, God can now offer you right here, where you at. He can offer you right now this. This. Eternal life. Restoration. Hope. Forgiveness. Purpose. Love. Joy. Everything that you are seeking with that void, he can fill it. He can offer it. All you have to do, you have the freedom of choice. All you have to do, if you're here right now and you're like, dang, what? I'm hearing with a different set of ears now. Like, I don't know everything this guy said, but here's what I know. God is real, yeah. And I do feel this separation thing, yeah. And I am empty, yeah. And I am seeking and pursuing and nothing is working, yeah. Now this guy is telling me it's because I'm separated from God. What do I got to do? Here's what you got to do. Repent. Repent. What's repent mean? It means right now you have a change in thinking that's going to bring about a change in behavior. You, you go from thinking God's this far off guy or that you do have a relationship or that sin fills to, you know what, I don't, I don't want to live this life no more. I don't want to think this way. I don't want to be this way. God, I want to know you. I want what this guy says. You want to off me right now. I want this eternity. I want this eternal life with you. And you wholeheartedly, with everything that's in you, call out to God and say, God, I want you. God, I need you. Save me. I want to know you. If you seek God with your whole heart, you'll find him. Now, I know there's some people here who like hear this stuff and they're like, oh, I don't know about all this God stuff. Listen, the, the debate for God's existence, the Bible's reliability, Jesus actually being who he was and raising from the dead isn't even worth having. There's overwhelming evidence that prove all of those things as being true. But I know there's some people here that are like, you know what, I don't know about this God stuff because, uh, you know, maybe I'll, I'll worry about that some other day. What day? What day will you make this decision? How many days do you have? Who knows when your day is going to be? Your day, my friend, is today. If you hear this and you know this, today's the day. Today's the day that you can come and have all of this. And so I want to give you an opportunity to respond to this message. And so what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes for the purpose of the privacy of the people around you. I'm going to ask you, person, if you're here today and you don't have a relationship with God and you want to start one and you have no idea what that looks like, but you want to take the first step and enter into that relationship. If you want to change course of your eternity today, then I'm going to ask you, while everyone else's heads are bowed, to lift up your head and make eye contact with me so I can see that you want to receive this free gift of eternal life and begin a relationship with God. If you want to do that, just pick up your heads now and make eye contact with me so I can see you. Amen. I see you in the back. Amen. Amen. I see you. Amen. Amen. I see you. Amen. Amen. I see you. Amen. Amen. Here's what I want you to do now. I'm going to give you some words to say. They're not magical words. I need you to take these words, and I need you to pray them to God with your heart. You're going to say with your whole heart, Dear God, I believe you're real. And I am a sinner. I am sorry for my sins. Jesus, I believe you're real. 
I believe you lived the perfect life. I believe you died. I believe you raised on the third day. Holy Spirit, I believe you're real. I ask you now, come, in, come into my life. Give me a new heart. Cause me to be born again. I want to know you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed that prayer, I would love to see you afterwards. I would love for you to pray with one of our counselors. I would love to have you be a part of our Roots class. I would love to give you a hug. I would love to give you a handshake. I would love to just be in your presence because today, my friend, God has blessed you in our presence with eternal life. Amen. We're so blessed. We're so blessed. I want to ask our worship team to come up at this time. I want to ask that our lights be lowered, and I'm going to ask you to rise as we close with a song. You know, Paul writes in Philippians, he says, For I have told you often before, and I'll say it again with tears in my eyes, that there are many whose conduct shows that they are really enemies of the cross of Christ. This is the world we're living in today. They're headed for destruction. Their God is their appetite. They brag about shameful things. And they think only about this life here on earth. But we, but we, families of faith, but we, born again, spirit-filled follower of Christ, we are citizens of heaven, where the Lord Jesus lives. And we're eagerly waiting for him to return as our Savior. We are citizens of heaven. I know the election's coming up. And I know a lot of people are banking their future on who gets into office. So I want to encourage you today to vote. But I also want to shift your thinking from thinking that a, a person being elected to office is your savior. A politician's not your savior. In this world, although we very much live in it, is not our home. I'm going to be going to vacation, Florida, for a week in October. And what I'm not going to do is build a home. What I'm not going to do is get a job. What I'm not going to do is buy a car. What I'm not going to do is make any sort of an investment in Florida. Why? I'm not from there. I live here in Illinois. And why anyone would want to leave the great state of Illinois, I have no idea. I want you to grasp this concept, right? Yeah, we're here on earth. We live in America. Decisions impact things. But we're not from here. Our citizenship is in heaven. And you are so blessed. You are so blessed. We'll close out our series with this key verse here. You are. You're not becoming. You're not almost. You're not one day going to be. You're not similar to. You're not like. You are. Where you sit today. Chosen race. Royal priesthood. Holy nation. A people for his own possession that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's who you are. You're so blessed. And so as we close with our song today, if you know it, sing it. If you sing, sing louder. If you sing and never raise your hands, raise your hands. If you don't know the song, let it wash over you as an absolute truth. But do something. Do something in, in, a, in a response, in a movement towards God. You're so blessed. In 
Jesus' name.